What's going on, Key Point? Hey, how's it going? So glad that you're here with us today. My name is Zach. My name is Brittany. And we're going to start service off for you in a little bit different way. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We have some pre-service announcements for you. Hey, first of all, we just want to say thank you for joining us today on our online platform. Church looks a little bit different right now. It's Church in the Wild, girl. It is Church in the Wild. Different. So we are just so thankful that you're joining us online. Get yes. your family, get them to the living room, crowd well, around, and let's have church together. PJs are okay, all right? If you just wear yep. shorts and a tank top, it's okay. You're at your own house. You do you. Coffee, you know, That's get it all right. together. That's right. But hey, we do have a couple of announcements. Zach, how can they give this morning? Yeah, so uh, it's a little bit different, obviously. You know, maybe some of you are used to bringing cash or check uh, on a Sunday morning. What we're asking you to do is go ahead and go online and set up an online giving platform. You can do that through our website, through our app, uh, and it'll give you prompts on how you can get that set up because we don't want ministry to stop. We know that meeting physically has stopped for the time being, but we don't want ministry to stop, man. We've got men and women who are going out, serving groceries and, and bringing canned goods and things like that. And we do not want to quit making a difference in our community. So you're giving online, your continued generosity that way is going to let us keep bringing hope and love and encouragement and necessities to people who are in need during this time. Yeah, also you can help us by sharing um, our online platforms, either Facebook, yeah. Instagram, yeah. share our sermons. Let people know that, man, in this uh, in this amount of chaos, there is hope. That's right. And as the church, we are bringing hope. So make sure you're sharing that, getting it to all your friends and family. But also, we have a crazy challenge that we want to do for the church. Yes. Zach, when yeah. do they get to win? So, hey, we are going to provide a pizza party and we're gonna do it by picking a random family who sends us a photo of them having church yeah. at home. So take a photo of your family in the living room, in the bedroom, whatever. If you're in the bed with your house shoes on, I don't care yeah. what it is, send us a picture, tag Key Point Church on Facebook or on Instagram. We're gonna pick somebody at random having church at home and send you a little pizza party, all that right? That is right, man. Yeah. Listen, everybody's like trying to get out and get groceries, but pizza delivered to your house, Hello. come on. That's right. All you have to do is post a photo. That's Tag right. Key Point Church, Key Point Church Springdale. Man, yes. we're gonna get your pizza this week. For we sure. are so excited for what God's going to do through Pastor Casey's message this morning. Yeah. If you missed last week when he spoke on fear, faith over fear, um, you can go back to the app or the website and watch it, yeah. and then join us this morning. We're so excited. Come on. We're gonna get worship started here in just a moment, so stay tuned. you hey. 
provide miracles to us, Lord. And in this time, we need it. We need it in our homes today. Where we are gathered, your presence is there. We lift your praise. I worship 
you are and what you are. Let's sing it out together. Waymaker, miracle, you are the promise keeper. Light in the dark, my God. My God, that is who you are. That Church, welcome to Church at Home. We're so glad you have joined with us. Hopefully, you're sensing the presence of God as as our worship team led us in to the presence of God. And you know, uh, before we get into our word today, just to let you know, um, we're going to continue online only until further notice. We want to follow what our government is saying about um, uh, gatherings and, and the sizes of gatherings. So please be mindful of that. Um, you can check out our social media posts. Um, uh, we'll be putting it on our website when, in fact, things do change. But until further notice, we are going to be meeting at home for church and gathering. Let's pray. Father, we love you, and we thank you for your presence today. Lord, we thank you that we, regardless of where we are, on our couch, in our car, on our back patio, Lord, we can hear your word and your word can change us. So right now we engage in your word. Lord, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak to us. Speak to me. Come on, specifically where you are. Ask the Holy Spirit. Speak to me pertaining to this word about fear to faith. Lord, I need you to speak to me. And I thank you that you're going to help me with peace. And you're going to help me walk in faith. And God, we give you all the glory. And it's your son's name we pray. And everyone who's watching at home, come on, say amen. 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 Well, if you, if you had to guess, what would you think is the number one command that God gives to you and I in Scripture than any other? Now, it's interesting to think because some, some would say, oh, well, it's, it's to show more love. Surely that's it. Or, or, or maybe cultivate more humility. You got to be humble. And that is the number one command in the Bible. Or, or I heard this one. You know, you just got to, you have to walk in his truth. But really none of those are the most commanded scripture. It, it, and the most common one is don't be afraid. Don't, don't be fearful. And, you know, this is a time of fear, really. And we live in a world that, that is driven by fear. And, and if you think about it, billions are made every year when it comes to fear. You think of all the scary movies that, that come out. I just watched The Quiet Place, and it scared me. <laughs> Be quiet, you know. Can't wait till Quiet Place 2 comes out. But millions and millions are made on home security systems, and rightly so. You know, um, millions are made on people freaking out that they're going to run out of toilet paper. In fact, today I got the best gift from anybody. One of my campus pastors, Pastor John Michael, brought me two four packs of Charmin. Come on, somebody. God is good. Amen. I don't have to be fearful that I'm going to run out of toilet paper. And you know, some of you moms this week after day two of homeschooling, you know, you begin to use fear as a tactic to control your kids, right? I'm going to take your iPhone away. Don't you dare do that again. Don't you slap your brother. I know we always use fear maybe to control people, but, but let's be real because fear today is real. It, it's a tangible emotion. Anxiety and, and worry, the, these are all the same emotion, but on different levels and different contexts, but it's real. And you may be anxious and, and maybe fearful about your future, you know, with the economy and finances. Probably one of the biggest things we're praying about right now is business and, and people who are trying to conduct business and so forth. Just fearful about their job situation. Maybe you're anxious or fearful about your health, health and that's understandable. We get that. We live in a real world with real, real situations that we're currently dealing with, but you don't have to live in fear, amen? You don't have to live in fear. And the word I believe the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me over and over and over again is be prudent, but don't panic. Come on, right there with me in your, in your living room or, or in your kitchen with your family. If you're by yourself, maybe you're with your friends or your siblings. Come on, say it. I'm going to be prudent and not panic. We're going to be prudent, but not panic. So, so here's the question. Since we are living in unprecedented times, since we are living in a time of uncertainty, 
how do I, which is the message that I want to speak to you today, and how do I flip the script on fear? If what we have is fear, and there's a lot of anxiety and worry, how, how do I flip that from fear to faith? And that's a great question to ask because I believe a lot of people are trying to figure that out. And the Apostle Paul was challenging Timothy and encouraging Timothy with several different commands. He said, Timothy, I want, I want to encourage you to steward the gifts that God has given you. And we're, we're very much about that here at Key Point Church. We believe that everybody has a gift. We believe everybody has a part to play. And I would encourage you as we go through this time where we're not gathering together, continue to steward your gifts. You life group leaders, you volunteers, so many people at our church understand and have embraced their gifts. And I would encourage you to continue to steward the gift that God has given you, okay? And then he goes on to say, and, and be faithful to the word that, that I have spoken over you. So I'll Obviously, there had been some moments where Timothy was being taught and mentored by the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Paul wanted to remind him, hey, remember all those life lessons that we walked through and I taught you? All right, don't forget those in these times of crisis. Don't, don't, don't forget those, those sound teachings. And, and then I believe he hit, hit, a, hit a, a chord that probably we all deal with, and he said, he said Timothy, I, I don't want you to be fearful. And this was the word, verse 7. I believe it is for our church. I believe it is for our world. He says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. He hasn't given us this, this, this spirit of fear. But here's what he's given us. He's given us power and he's given us love and he's given us a sound mind. Now, the first two things are God. We'll get to that in a moment. And the last thing is sound mind. That's on us, all right? So, so he, here's what the Apostle Paul is saying. You got to get this before we move on. If we're going to flip the script on fear, then, then, then we're going to have to realize that we don't have to be driven by fear. We don't have to be controlled by the panic. We, we, don't, we don't have to worry about what possibly could happen. And more than likely, it won't happen. But according to what the Apostle Paul is saying and what the Holy Spirit is doing, we can live free from an unhealthy fear. Amen? We can. Do you believe that? You've got to believe that. Because if you don't, then you will be stuck in fear. And as Christ followers, we don't have to. We can be free from fear and we can walk by faith. And faith is important to a Christian because the Bible says... Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Why do you think it is the number one command in Scripture? Because God knew that the antithesis of faith is fear. Just as much the presence of God can be, can be classified as faith, the presence of the enemy can be classified as fear. So let's talk about flipping the script. Apostle Paul gives us three keys right here to flipping the script on fear. And here's the first one. If you're taking notes at home, which I hope you are, write this down. You got to understand that God, with God, um, you have access to his power. Understand that you have access to God's power. Now, there is a difference between God's power that you and I have access to and, and the gods of this world's power, okay? There is a massive difference. You can't even compare them. God's power is real. It's tangible. It's, it's accessible. But the world that, and theirs is not so much. And this word in the scripture right here, it's the word dunamis. It's the Greek word Dunamis, and, and it, it talks about his ability and God's strength. So, so, so think about what the Apostle Paul is saying. He said, Timothy, you don't have to be driven by fear, but you have God's ability and strength for, with you. In other words, you have the muscle to do. You, you've got the supernatural muscle to do what you physically cannot do. And I love working out. I love going to the health club. And my kids corrected me. Back in the 80s and 90s, we called it health clubs. Now they call them gyms, all right? So I love going to the gym, and I love working out. And I have found out, and it didn't take me long to realize this, that I am not that strong of a man, all right? Now, now don't judge me, all right? All right? I know my limits, all right? And I was wanting to do some leg presses one day. It's where you lay on your back, and you press this platform up and on the outside of the platforms are the weights, all right? And you hang 45 pounds on it. 
each additional uh, 45 pounds and, and, and what have you. And there was a gentleman that I would have to say was much stronger than me. Let's just say that, all right? And I was counting the plates and, and he was close to 1,000 pounds on his leg press. And he was just a huffing and a puffing and, and sweat was going everywhere and he was pressing that weight. And, and I gotta tell you, I was mesmerized by his strength. Sometimes, uh, in fact, I think I was drooling. I had to wipe my lips off like, oh my gosh. I was coveting this man's thighs, you know, in a good way. Come on, flow with me, all right? Come on, come on. PC's gonna be PC, all right? And, and he got off of the machine, and I kid you not, I thought, I'm not going behind him because I'm gonna have like 145 on each side. I'm not doing that. So I went and did something else, to be honest, all right? I know my limits, all right? I know my limits. Now, now I am talking about physical strength here, but, but what the apostle Paul is saying has to do with spiritual strength. Do you have the spiritual strength to flip the script on fear? Do you have the emotional strength to flip the script on fear? And I would say a lot of people don't right now. Do, 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 you, do you have the, the mental strength? Where are you mentally? Are you, are you mentally at a healthy place where, where you could rise up from fear and begin to walk in faith? To say it is one thing, but to actually walk in it is another. And obviously, Timothy was not. Obviously, Timothy was being influenced more by fear than the power of God that he had access to. Think about the disciples. God chooses 12 men. It was a motley crew of men. Some of them were uneducated. Some of them um, were fishermen. Some of them uh, did trades and so forth. But it was 12 men. And in Matthew chapter 10... Jesus calls them to himself and, and he, he gives them authority and, and he gives them power to go and heal the sick. And, and not only that, but he gives them authority and power to go out and, and to bring freedom to people. Doesn't that sound like what we are today as the church, right? <laughs> That's what we're doing. And then in Matthew 26, we fast forward a little bit. Jesus is arrested. Fear and panic hit the disciples and, and the followers of Christ. And they forget about that moment in Matthew chapter 10 where they had the ability to cast out evil spirits and walk in God's authority and pray for the sick and, and, and so forth. They, they totally forgot about that moment. And the Bible tells us that they fled in fear for their lives. Not one of them. Even Peter didn't even make it to the crucifixion. They, they, they ran in fear. Then in John chapter 20, verse 19, this is so telling of someone who is captivated by fear. It, you find them in verse 19, you find them together. And the Bible says this, the doors were locked. They were inside for fear of the Jews. Not only were they inside hiding, but they, they locked the doors Shimmy the door, windows, nobody can get in. They were just locked down with fear. Now something began to happen. We shift into Acts and we're seeing something change within the disciples. And Peter gets up in Acts and he preaches a very powerful message. He preaches the gospel He preaches the word of God, and he, he's not standing up there with fear. Read it for yourself. It's an amazing message. And, and the result of this, this power-filled message, lives were changed. Amen? People had an opportunity to give their heart to Christ. And here's why. Because Peter and the disciples, they were no longer influenced by fear. They realized, wait, Jesus gave us authority. He gave us power, and now they were operating in it. Acts Chapter 4, verse 33, check this out. It says, and with great power. You see that word right there? It's the same word that is used in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Now, before I move on, you've got to see this moment here. The apostles at this moment, you can tell they were walking in the anointing of God because they were more concerned about others in this crucial moment than themselves. 
And in times of panic and in times of fear, we often draw back and we, we, we look inside. But Philippians 2.4 says, look to the interest of others as well. And that's what we want to do. And, and they were able to be witnesses because of God's great power and God's great grace. As if plain power wasn't good enough. God wanted them to have great power as if Grace wasn't good enough. It said it was great grace. So think about it. Here's the apostles, and we have this same opportunity. They walked with more favor and more ability to do. Amen? That's what God has for us. You want to flip the script? Then begin to walk in God's great grace and God's great power in your life. Amen? God wouldn't command you to not fear and then not provide you the great power to overcome fear. He wouldn't. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can emotionally, I can mentally, and I can spiritually walk through this storm. And when I come out on the other side, I'm going to be a much better person, a stronger family. Imagine what God is going to do in the church because of all of us gathering at home and taking God seriously. I really believe that he is doing more in this than we could ever imagine. We'll see in the future. We'll look back. And, and yet we'll look back at not being able to gather on Sunday morning and have life groups and do life together. But I believe the body of Christ is going to be stronger because of this moment. Yeah. Number two, you want to flip the script on fear, then you got to understand God's love. The apostle Paul said, make sure, make sure you understand his power and then you have, to, you have to understand his love. And the word here in the Greek is the word agape love. And this agape love, it's this affectionate, over-the-top, extravagant, indulgent, if you will, kind of love. And this is important for us as Christians to understand this, this kind of love. It's the kind of love that guys use whenever they're trying to charm this woman to be their wife. I know for me, I had this indulgent, over-the-top kind of love when I was courting Stacy. I wanted her to know more than anything else that I loved her, that I would lay down my life for her. So I went over the top. It was agape love. Amen? Amen. And that's what the Apostle Paul is reminding Timothy. Don't forget about his love. Yeah. And here's why this is important. Because one day we're going to be between a rock and a hard place, and I would say we're in between that now. And if we fail to realize the love that God has for us, then we will lose our faith very, very fast. We will fall to anxiety. We will fall and yield to the influence of fear. Now, my children, they know that I, God, they love them. And I wanted them to understand their father's love. And early on, all three of my children, um, they would jump off of the, the playground in our backyard into my arms. And it was very high, six or seven feet. And they were very timid at first. They were very fearful because if they were to hit the ground, they understood gravity at a very young age. But I convinced them, no, your daddy loves you. I, I affectionately love you. I'm over the top in my love for you, which means that I love you so much, I'm not going to let you fall and hit the ground, all right? And the moment they, they begin to realize how much I love them, they jumped off the, 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 this jungle gym that we had and, and were flying in the air and their faces were shock and amazement and then I caught them I put them on the ground and it was beautiful you know what they said next again and they ran up the ladder and climbed up to the top of the clubhouse and jumped off again about an hour later I said all right enough kids I love you but I'm done all right I need a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something all right but they trusted in my love. They knew that I was going to be there to catch them. 1 John 4, 18 says it this way. There is no fear in love. When I know the love that my God has for me, it drives away. That's what it says. It drives out fear. Perfect love drives out fear. So let's step it up. During this time of unease, during this time of, of tension, let, let's step it up and love our neighbor. Let's show some agape love. Let, let's beyond just praying for them, let's, let's go and love on people. Let's go and hand out groceries and, and see what our neighbors need. And, and let's be the church that this world needs. Again, Philippians 2, 4. It's okay to check on your own interests and make sure you have what you need, but let's not stop right there. 
Don't forget about our name. Jesus is the key, but people are the point. It's always about others, all right? Let's not make this all about us. It's about others. And then you want to flip the script on fear? Here's the third one, and I challenge you with this. And this is going to be a challenge because this is where most people lose the battle because we know God is faithful with his power. It's always there. We know God's love will never slack towards me. But here's my part, and that's to control your mind. Listen to me. This is really important. Don't check out right now. All right. You, you got to learn how to control your mind because we choose what influences us. You do. You have to control what you're seeing, control what you're hearing, control what, what you're talking about. You've got to be in control, especially in times like this where you turn on the news and all you hear is catastrophe and fear and the economy crashing and, and this and that. And we, we've got to choose and monitor what we are watching and hearing. Because it's all about the battle in our mind. And the Apostle Paul was saying, Timothy, you've got to keep, you've got to fight every minute of the day to have a sound mind. And the word sound in the Greek, it means a disciplined mind. It means a mind that is self-control. And he was saying, it's time to step up and discipline your mind and think on good things. Come on, somebody. We've got we to gotta stop thinking about all the bad things. Let's think about the good things that are happening right now. Let's think about what God has for us, that he is in control, that he is almighty, and he's not surprised about what's going on. He is sovereign, and at the end of the day, he is going to get all the glory. Come on, let, let that be what goes through your mind. You know, for me, one of the best ways that I have found that I can keep a sound mind is when I pray in the Holy Spirit. I just get on my knees and I just begin praying in the Holy Spirit and I ask the Lord, help me keep my mind sound right now because my mind can get undisciplined fast. And when it gets undisciplined, I open up the door to worry and anxiety and fear and things that control my mind that more than likely will never even happen. And here's the command in the book before 2 Timothy, it's 1 Timothy. And the Apostle Paul challenged Timothy. He said, my son, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you. So that by recalling them, here it is, you may fight the battle well. Fight the battle well. And I believe this is where most people lose the battle of fear. And it's right there in their minds. Why is that? Like I said before, because it's undisciplined. And they begin to think thoughts like, you know, what, if, what if we lose our job? What if we have to go bankrupt? I won't last financially. What, what if I get this disease? What, 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 what if one of my children gets this disease? And next thing you know, all, all that's going through our mind is fear and anxiety and worry. And if I can, let me be real um, strong about fearful thinking. And the Bible's very clear about this. Let me warn you about this. Job chapter three, verse 25 says, everything I fear and dread comes true. Listen to me. If we continue fearful thinking, it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. We don't wanna live like that. I don't wanna live my life like that. Where I think the worst and all of a sudden it happens. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And scripture says, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks, as a person thinks, so is he. In other words, fear creates what is fears. I fear this. I fear that. I fear that. And we're not walking by faith and we create our own fears. That is not what God has for us. So here's my question as I close. What if your biggest fears come true? And for me, I have to ask myself this question because what it does, it gives me a balance. It, it's, it pulls me back from the edge, if you will. What if my biggest fear comes true or what's the worst that could happen to me? I could die. Well, as a Christian, is that bad? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'd be instantly in the presence of God. And I love how the Apostle Paul said it in Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. He says, if God is for me, who can be against me? 
If, if God is for me, who can be against me? If God is for me, then why fear what could happen? If all hell breaks loose in my life, it doesn't have the power to destroy me. This too shall pass. I'm telling you, I, I believe this will pass. I've seen situations like that with Y2K. I saw the flood several years ago in Baton Rouge. I saw Hurricane Katrina and the devastation that it placed on South Louisiana and families and industries and churches and businesses. And guess what? Louisiana is still there. They are. This too shall pass. We will thrive. As Christ followers, we will thrive and move on. David said in Psalms 34, verse 4, I sought the Lord, and I know many of you are seeking the Lord. Our intercessory teams are seeking the Lord. Our staff and our volunteers and our leaders, our serve team, we're, we're seeking the Lord. He said, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. It's beautiful knowing that when we pray, he hears us from heaven, right? And what did he do? He delivered me from all my fears. You know, I want to remind you in times of crisis, in times of uncertainty, it's time for us as Christians to rise up. It is. This is our time and I believe we are. I've seen it. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to friends who are in the ministry. Unbelievable reports of what Christians are doing for the world today. Unbelievable. We're going to play our part. And I want to challenge you like the Apostle Paul challenged Timothy to don't give in to the spirit of fear. Don't, don't. You owe it to yourself and your family. If you're single, if you're single again, if you're empty nesters and, and retired, don't give in to the panic and anxiety and worry of fear. Don't rise up in faith. Walk in God's power today. Understand his agape love for you. And then every day, if it takes you doing it every minute, then make sure you choose to walk with the mind of Christ. You choose to close the door to fear and you, you entertain God's thoughts, his desires, his word over and speak it over your life. Will you bow, bow your heads with me? Those who are watching, maybe in your room, Again, maybe in your living room, will you bow your heads with me? Because we want to give you the opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord. Don't turn this off. Just hang on for a few more minutes. We're almost over. If you're here and you're hearing my voice today, you're watching online, and, and you would say, Pastor Casey, you know, I've given into fear. I've given into anxiety. That's all right. You can repent. God will forgive you. Let's move on. But maybe what you need to do is make the Lord or make Jesus the Lord of your life. Maybe you've never given to Jesus Christ your heart. I want to invite you right now, wherever you are, to close your eyes, and bow your head, and say this simple sinner's prayer after me. Come on, out loud, say, Jesus Christ, I ask you to save me. I ask you to forgive me. Come on, say this. I repent of my sins. Thank you for saving me. Jesus, you are my Lord. Amen. Now listen to me. I would love for you right now to let us know if you gave your heart to Christ. There's a link right there where you can click on and you can let us know, hey, I gave my heart to Christ. I made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. This is very, very important to us as we continue to pastor Key Point Church. Very important. You know, there's many, many different steps you can take. We have Grove Track. Grove Track Step 4 that's going to be going on Sunday afternoon, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Go and be a part of that, okay? Get involved in that. You can find out how to get involved in that today on our website. But listen to me. Let us know what's going on. If you have prayer for anything, if you have a need, a physical need, a financial need, please let us know. Go to keypoint.church and, and email us. Let our pastoral staff know if you have any cares or concerns so we can be here for you. Once again, we don't know how long this is going to be. 
It could, it could end in two weeks. I hope so, so we can have Easter and gather. If not, then we'll gather in our homes for Easter. But be mindful of social media. We'll give you updates as we, we figure out what we need to do based upon what the government is saying and our, 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 our nation is saying when it comes to our governors and our presidents. So, so please be mindful of that. And we love you. And never forget that Jesus is the key and people are the point.